What's going on, guys and gals? Chris the Bonafide Hustler coming to you live from the inside of my garage. It's kind of rainy, kind of cold outside here in Austin, Texas today. But I thought I would make a video before I process all this kind of stuff and put it in boxes on my box wall. But anyways, if this is the first time you're watching my channel, please subscribe. And I'll basically show you how to flip used items, typically that I find from garage sales and thrift stores. And I'll put it on places like eBay, Amazon, Craigslist, my antique booth and other consignments avenues in town. Anyways, that's who I am, the Bonafide Hustler. And I definitely want to show you today um, the finds from two days of thrifting. I only did four hours, right? I did two hours yesterday, and I did about an hour and a half today, about two hours today. And then there's probably going to be about 30 minutes of processing, something like that, maybe an hour. But uh, it's about three and a half hours of sourcing and about an hour of prep. So that's essentially what I'm looking into and I got some cool finds, and I definitely want to share with you guys out there, uh, you know, what I found. So that way, hopefully, you can find it out there as well, and you can see like the reasoning of why I bought it, and what I hope and expect to make on this stuff, including the time frame uh, of the money flip. So, anyways, that's pretty much it. Hopefully, you can hear me. I forgot to actually route the sound to the camera, so give me one second. I think it's kind okay, of cool. So it sounds good. Good to see everybody. We have Chris Urate in the chat. We have OGC Shells Quick Ship Quick. Thrift and Flip RA, Sheila and Johnny. It's good to see everyone here and Yesenia. So it's good to see you guys out there. We've got someone from California, first time to catch a live video, which is really cool. So thank you for joining. I really do appreciate it. So, all right, so let me just show you what I found yesterday at thrift stores, which I thought was really cool. Um, I spent two hours. I don't really ever spend more than two hours unless it's a rainy Saturday or Sunday and I'm with my wife downtown. And we just happen to go get lunch somewhere, and then we thrift for like an hour or two, then we get something else like coffee or something, thrift for an hour or two. That's the only real time that I thrift for like four hours or five hours, you know, in a situation like that. But typically, I do what's called hot shots, and they're really high energy, high concentration, high, high concentrated, uh, uh, you know, thrift visits that I do during the week. And those are typically two hours a piece. So I'm going to show you two hours yesterday and about an hour and a half today of what I found. So let's look at yesterday's finds. Um, I went to a Goodwill. Thought that was amazing because the second I walked in, I already you know stumbled upon this. Anytime that there's something sealed in plastic, you should be looking at it on Amazon, um, especially when it's some. I love selling things like this: broadband routers, um, you know, cell boosters, all that kind of stuff. Um, signal boosters. If it's in plastic, I'm going to scan it. I was un ungated in this as well. This is a Linksys broadband router right here. Uh, it was ten dollars out the door and uh, yielding about $76 on FBA with like a 1392 rank or something like that. So we got something like this. That was an easy, easy um, sale. You know, a lot of times um, people are going to ask, you know, what do you do when you have these wrapped products and they have a little bit of, you know, like the plastic, like a tiny little corn you can see right here. I still send it in as new. Personally, I do. But when this thing, when it becomes an actual gaping hole and the, you know, the plastic is flapping, then I list it as like new and I explain that it actually is new in the description. But right here we have, you know, some cuts that have a hole here and there. But this thing is a brand new product. But if you're ever wondering, you know, how I ship this stuff in, um, yeah, I classify this as new as long as I'm not seeing some crazy flapping plastic or anything like that. Because a lot of times, you know, when something is plastic wrapped, on the corners, it's it's going to be kind of bare on a lot of the corners anyways. So anyways, that's what I found right there. That was an easy, easy, uh, you know, after all, all said and done, it's probably about 65 bucks right here. So that was pretty awesome. Um, I was, you know, putting around that thrift store. Filters are a good thing to put on FBA as well. So if you're not scanning filters or things that look like this, they could be water filters, HEPA filters, uh, vacuum cleaner filters, shop vac filters, all that kind of stuff. It really don't matter because if it has a barcode, all right, which is right there, uh, this this ended up being one dollar. There's a little bit of edge crush on this, but not enough to be a like new condition. This is still going as new, and um, this one was a dollar out the door, very low rank, uh, going to yield nineteen bucks in profit. So that was pretty good as well. You know, got to get stuff like this. I really don't care what it's for, right? As a, if it has a barcode, I can definitely see that the filter is unused. Then I will ship this off to FBA. All right, what else do we got here? This was probably one of the bigger winners yesterday. I mean, so awesome. This is probably the first time I've ever found one of these in a thrift store that was new. So we have a Gorilla Pod. Look at this. This thing was sitting in a thrift store for $5.99. So I used a 10% off coupon. You know, I walked out the door paying six bucks. But yeah, this thing was brand new. Like, talking about Casey Neistat stuff. 
Uh, this, uh, this actually allows for a six pound camera or so to be on it. So basically most SLR cameras, uh, Canon 70D, T3Is, all that kind of stuff can be on this. Uh, Sony A6500s, A3s, all that kind of, or A7Ds, all that kind of stuff can be on this pod. Um, it's a basically it's a tripod that can you know go to so many different ways, and it can actually hang on trees and things like that. Let me get the glare out of there so you can kind of see. Uh, Sixty bucks, gonna convert this really low rank two as well. I think it's like rank one twenty or something like that. Uh, this is gonna be shipped off to Amazon because it's definitely brand new. I can see the actual tape right here on the on the actual seals and the joints, so that's amazing. Uh, that'll go in. I think it sells or it nets a check for around sixty-four dollars or something like that. So that's pretty good right there. You know, there's some extra money right there. I couldn't believe this is just in a thrift store, a goodwill. Like I turned a corner, it was on a bookshelf, kind of tucked away in the dark part of the bookshelf. I mean, I still looked at it and I was very surprised to see it there. You know, I was thinking like, wow, if that thing is open, I could still sell this thing locally uh, for around thirty to forty bucks. You know, but. Pretty nice that it's sealed up. Okay, so I go to that. Oh man, this is one of the best finds, anyways. Um, I hope you guys are having some fun. I haven't asked you guys to hit the like button yet, so I'll ask you now. Hit the like button, and uh, that would definitely help my channel out. If you're not subscribed, make sure you're subscribed. You know, this is one of the best things <laughs> to do in your spare time. You don't need a boss to do this kind of stuff. You don't need anyone, you know, telling you what to do or whatever. This is just pure fun, motivation, and going out there and just finding deals, putting them on places like eBay and Amazon and local markets, and then flipping it for cash and repeating the process. It's a lot of fun. Then make sure you take some of that money, save it, or make sure that you do something really important uh, to where it makes you want to do this again and again and again. So I tend to save 30% of my money, and then the rest of it kind of goes back in my pile to buy more stuff. So you know, when I go on vacations and stuff, that's usually thrifted money, or if I pay extra, you know, payments on my house. That's a lot of times thrift, thrifted money as well. And uh, it's really cool what you can do with that money. So anyways, uh, <laughs> good to see all you guys in the chat right now. Um, I don't know who, how many people are in this feed. Let me go check this out real quick. Uh, I'm just purely, I'm curious at this point. Drag this little window over. All right, give me one second, guys. If you're having fun, hit that like button. 59 viewers. Okay. So this was the other find from the same Goodwill where I found the Gorilla Pod. I found the filter, and then I found that one other thing. Oh yeah, that router. So already I was like, dang, like this is almost like a TLP like find. And TLP to me is taco level profits, meaning I get close to about three hundred dollars in pure profit. And obviously, like not then and there, but once it's all converted and everything does what it needs to do, TLP for me is a is a two hour hot shot when I go out and thrift and I make about three hundred dollars or more. I call it taco level profits. Then I go get tacos and it's a lot of fun. So this was this definitely, I think, threw it into the, it, very close to the TLP at this point was this thing. Um, who knows what this is? You should know what this is. If you don't know what this is, you need to pick up my shoe guide. I'm telling you right now. But anyways, this is a very much a no brainer in very good condition. Typically when I find these, they're not in this great a condition. So check it out. Look at the bottom of those. Looks pretty good. I would say these are nubs on nubs. We can do the check right there. If you guys know what I'm talking about, it's also in the guide. These are Cole Han. Now, <clears throat> there are two Cole Hans that I once, okay, so I still like to flip these, but there was another one called the Lunar Grand, which I did like to flip too, but I like to get those like less than five bucks or something like that and then target 55 or more on Lunar Grands. But these are zero grands, okay? And these happen to be a really cool colorway as well. So these are basically uh, wingtip shoes, highly comfortable, made by Cole Han contracted with a nike undersole and they are just wicked awesome right so really cool um yeah zero grands typically in this colorway will sell for about 100 bucks and these were ten dollars out the door couldn't believe it this was like a, the easiest pickup of all time as soon as i saw them i was like oh my gosh flipped them over saw the condition did a little sh uh, shoe check in my head which is on the guide and then i immediately saw the price and i was like this is a no-brainer absolutely no-brainer right there this would be a hundred dollar sale all day all freaking day um, I believe this is the size 10M, right? So it's a medium size. Oh my, I mean, come on. It's like the best of everything. Like it's really good. So anyways, really good. You'll know that the zero grand has a lot more wear and tear when you see the edges of these little things getting worn down right here. So these are like really nice and sharp. You can kind of see. So yeah, it's in really good condition. There you go. So that was the last one from that Goodwill. I proceeded down the highway. Uh, let's think. Two minutes later, I was at another Goodwill. Um, and I found this. 
Now I'm going to show you guys the back of this thing. Who knows what this thing is right here? Take a guess right now. Even if it's not live and you're watching this video, just take a guess anyways. Um, but if you're live, take a guess what this thing is. And do you think it's profitable? I mean, clearly if I have it in my garage, it's profitable. But would you pick something like this up? Let me know yes or no. What do you think this is? <laughs> I'm going to shout out some people in the feed real quick. we got Mo Hustle, Frankie Vegas, Gina R, Jay Galvin. All of my friends are here. Love you guys. Uh, I love you guys because you guys like to thrift a lot and you guys just are always here. It's like the same people. I love it. So what do you guys think? Jay Galvin. That's right. What do you guys think? Would you would you buy this thing? Who knows exactly what this is? I'll give you a closer look. What do you think this is? I think I paid too much. I paid thirteen dollars for it. Just kidding. This thing's worth a lot. Um, <laughs> what's up, OGC? That's right. My boy's here. Yes, it's a scanner. Okay, so this is a receipt scanner, card scanner, document scanner. Okay, so you can put eight and a half, eight and a half by eleven pieces of paper in here. You can put actual receipts in here too. This is made by a company called Neat. This is very important. You should take, definitely take notes on this thing. So yeah, you can put normal documents here. You can put receipts in here, or you can put cards that you want copied in here, like people's business cards or things like that. So this thing basically takes a big scan of it, throws it on a file on your computer, and you can throw this stuff and the other stuff in the trash. And it's good for tax keeping purposes, all that kind of stuff. I mean, paper is all over the place, and there's a lot of people, including your banks, and uh, you know. All kinds of things, credit unions, they all want to do paperless stuff because paper is just all over the place and it gets it's easy to get your house cluttered up with paper. The only kind of paper that I ever keep, I try to keep, um, are actual receipts. I don't know. I mean, I should probably keep this thing, but I'm not going to. Um, and I do keep any kind of tax related things possible for the past, was it seven years or something like that? Outside of that, I don't like keeping paper stuff very much. But yeah, for somebody that's like dealing with a lot of receipts and a lot of documents and a lot of business cards, this thing is going to really help them out. See? So pretty cool, right? <laughs> uh, it was $13. Um, they do sell used in good condition for around $150, right? Um, you, what you do want to do is at least at the very bare minimum, plug it in at the thrift store, okay? And you're, you're looking for two cables, all right? One is going to be the actual power source and two is going to be the actual USB cord, which has almost like a printer output right there like this see this right so it has a printer input going to a USB output kind of thing and you're definitely gonna want that although you can find that kind of anywhere but it gets kind of annoying trying to find one uh, but yeah so you want those two cables and then you can test this thing out it's called a neat scanner pretty awesome and uh, yeah pretty neat right most most people will scan to put it into a file on their computer obviously but yeah that's pretty much that right there Pretty cool. And that's what it's for, duh. Uh, what else did I find yesterday? The thrift store before that one. I mean, I have this route where I can just do one thrift store, actually two thrift stores, a pawn shop, a Salvation Army, and then another thrift store, something like that. Anyways, at one of the thrift stores yesterday, this was $1.60 out the door. I have an antique booth, and this thing right here uh, would sell for about 20 plus in the antique booth. Now, this is not an actual, because there have been a couple of NASA hats out there that have been created. I have one of the better ones that I keep personally. And this one's just like a generic, like, eh, you know, this one's made by Tournament Apparel. It's a large, it's not that great of a hat, but it's pretty cool. Somebody at the antique booth is definitely gonna want this thing for around 20 bucks. So $1.61, that has to go in the booth right there. A brand new NASA hat, unworn. Um, all right, so that was, oh yeah, and still yesterday. Man, yesterday was a really, really good cheddar day. I spent, um, I think I paid full price for these because I didn't want to use my 30% off coupon for this. I want to use it for a much larger purchase. And this was the only thing I bought from the first savers of yesterday. So these were $27.99. You might be thinking that's pretty steep. Uh, but brand new ones of these so go for $150, like $150 to $179. All right. So these are basically Rocky Welt boots. These are Rocky Welt lacers. Um, in a tan configuration, they're in perfect condition, right? These, I'm going to be listing these as new without tags, okay? So new without tags, and if you look at the bottom, you're like, are you sure they're new bona fide? Like, I don't believe you. You and your cheddar are a bunch of BS. Like, no, no. these are definitely, look at the bottom of these things, all right? So you can, don't be afraid to put new without tags if you can definitely tell they've never been worn, right? So you see the bottom of those? They're in really good condition. Yeah, they've never been worn once. Pretty nice. 
These are not steel toe. In fact, if these were steel toe, they'd probably come in a little bit higher resale. But this kind of stuff is awesome. Go check out my shoe guide. It's very important. Um, yeah, these are nice. <laughs> I like them a lot. I'm not a huge fan of the Rocky brand, but um, I don't really resell too much Rocky unless it's stuff like this. So that's good. Yeah, really clean, incredible, impeccable condition. Should be able to resell these for 100 to about a 120 because they're new without tags. Um, I mean, I could try the 150 range, but I would, my only hope would be to find a size, what, nine and a half uh, medium size, you know, another site that's completely out of stock of them. And then the person would just buy it off me. So I'm probably just going to try to undercut the top person just by a little bit, maybe 139, 129, something like that. But it's a pretty good hustle. Don't be afraid of big prices um, if you have a brand new product in front of you, especially something like this. And boots are really good. When there's a, when there, you know, if it's shoes or boots or something like that, I tend, if it's brand new, I would much rather resell a brand new boot than a brand new pair of shoes. This is totally true um, because brand new boots typically, uh, how do I say it? Brand new shoes, unless it's like an Allen Edmonds or something like that, that's a different story. But like brand new, I would go boot all day because boot is just very, very sought after. The people that buy boots know exactly what they want. Um, and they're like dead set. They've done the research. Like they know exactly what model they want or they just want a secondary because they've already worn out their primary one, you know? So I like boots a lot. They command higher resale than, than most shoes if you know what you're looking for. And I do disclose a lot of that in the guide in the first place. But uh, yeah, boots like this are great. Okay, so if you're not looking at boots, basically, you need to be looking at boots. It's very important, not just cowboy boots and Western boots and stuff like that. You need to be looking at work boots. You need to be looking at chuck boots. You need to be looking at ankle boots. You need to be looking at Chelsea boots. You need to be looking at those kind of things. So, you know, beetle boots, beetle type boots. Side zip boots, you know, Doc Martin type boots. You need to be looking at all that stuff. Yeah, because boots are freaking great. Yeah, so awesome, right there. Um, man, and this one yesterday. I'm telling you, this is still from yesterday's finds. I found some stuff today. What the hell is it? Oh, yeah, it's this thing. This and something else. Oh, it's inside. Anyway, so found two finds today, and this is the last of yesterday's finds. Um, I did, yeah, I bought, I bought this and I found this. Okay, so I bought this at a Goodwill, same Goodwill I found the filter and the gorilla pod and all that kind of stuff. I bought this thing for four dollars out the door. Anytime you find these things, if you're not sending this stuff off the FBA, you're missing out on big money. Okay. Anytime you get to find the Xbox 360, it's actually on the back of here. It's called a Red Octane Les Paul wireless controller. This one does not need a dongle or anything like that. Now you do need to test it out and stuff like that. Don't be worried because Xbox 360s are like all over the place. They're like in every garage sale. You can scoop an Xbox 360 up for about you know, if you look hard enough and you hustle hard enough, you can get one for about 20 to 50 bucks if you look hard enough at garage sales. So the reason why I say that is because you should probably get one and keep it and learn how to test these things out, <clears throat> all right? The best things about these things is because, let me just tell you a couple things. Because this one doesn't need a dongle, like I said earlier. It's very, very uh, almost damage proof. And if you pair it with the right game, I mean, alone, it does sell for around 40, no, around 56 to 64 dollars alone just on fba just this guitar okay now they'll take about 30 percent they'll cut you a check for the rest but this guitar uh you know sells for around that much on fba really good i mean super good rank and they don't produce them anymore which is you know part of the reason why everyone's wanting them you pair it with this game right here all right look at this game everyone should know this by now guitar hero three legends of rock xbox 360. it's an xbox 360 game going with an Xbox 360 guitar. And this combination right here is one of the fastest selling combinations you can put on FBA right now. All the way through the year too. It's like almost non-dependent of seasonality. I mean, it's just awesome. There's no seasonality to this thing. Now, the other thing I like about this, the third thing I really like about this, is if you pull this trigger back here on the back of the guitar, it separates. Meaning, once you saran wrap this stuff together, then typically what I do is I put this right here, I put the game right here, and I saran wrap that whole thing together with a strap, and that's how I send it off to FBA along with other things. And this, day one, if you price it right now like 100 bucks, it goes day one. That it gets The first day it gets checked in at FBA, it sells on day one. Yeah, it's like super fast, I'm telling you. Anyway, so yeah, and if you wanna put it back just like that. Now the interesting thing is you should always have more copies of this thing. Any thrift store, any pawn shop I go to, I'm looking for this game specifically. Like I'm buying them uh, for five dollars and less, no matter where I go. Okay, as long as they're in good condition or even light scratched condition, that's fine. They'll still play in the Xbox 360. 
Um, now, if you're wondering, like, how the hell do I test it out? Put this game in your Xbox 360. Um, put two AA batteries in the back of this thing right here. All right. And then what you're going to want to do is just sit in front of your Xbox and your TV. You're going to power this thing on. And there's a little button on the Xbox 360. It's a little tiny button that looks like this. You're going to press that button. You're going to press this button about the same time. It's going to link the controller up wirelessly. And then from there, you can do the guitar tutorials on the game. You don't have to actually just you know, play a song or whatever. You can just do the tutorials real quick and, you know, learn how to play some things and just test out some of the keys. One of the things I like to do also on this guitar, um, or anytime I find this guitar, is you want to make sure that the actual whammy bar is not loose, that it's staying real good and it feels nice and tight. Outside of that, these things are absolutely gold mines and they're in super high demand right now paired with this game. It's a bundle on FBA called the Legends of Rock Guitar Hero 3 Les Paul Bundle. There's like... 20 bundles on FBA uh, between PS3 and 360 um, and Wii, PS2 for different guitars. This is probably the best bundle you can put together right here. That's easy to find, all right? This is not a hard thing to find. This is like every freaking direction you turn. If I search hard enough, I could probably find two or three of these a week combinations. Like So that's, uh, yeah, and you don't need the dongles for this. That's the thing. You need dongles for like some of the PS3 ones and stuff, but this one right here, this is the actual bundle that you ship off to FBA. This right here that you're looking at with the strap and all that kind of stuff. Even if it didn't have the strap, it wouldn't matter. Even if it has stickers on the front of the guitar, disclose that in FBA. The funny thing is my brother put one of these as a test, okay? He tested the guitar out. He tested the game out. Everything was good. And he put it on a local market, okay? He put it on Facebook Marketplace or something like that. Sold one for 50 bucks the other day. So even if you don't want to mess with FBA, all right, you can put this stuff on your local markets and still sell them. So just uh, just kind of a heads up. Um, Brandon Van says, why FBA versus eBay? Okay, so eBay, you still have to ship it off and all that kind of stuff. FBA, you can put a bunch of stuff in one box. It's heavily subsidized with U UPS, and they have fulfillment centers like near – it's almost in every big town now in America. So the subsidized shipping is one of the big perks. It's out of the way, not even in your, um, in your inventory in your house. So that's another perk. And then the last thing is um, – yeah, it goes on Amazon's listings, and it just goes so fast. I mean, the rank is so low on these things, it's ridiculous. So I'm probably going to list my next one that's in this perfect condition, just like this. No stickers on it, and it looks real good. Some surface scratches like that, a couple of surface scratches on the game. Probably sell the next one that I send in, which will probably be this weekend. I might send three in this weekend. Um, I'll probably price those at 120 or so. So, yeah, because the one that sold at 100 bucks sold – immediately like day that it checked and like within five minutes of checking in it was gone so just so you know um that's what it's all about so go check that out if you deal with fba you have to do a little bit of more you know market not research but you're going to want to know what the market is it's really easy to see what's in the prime market uh not very hard to do so yeah that's pretty much awesome are the ones with dongles not very desirable no <laughs> the ones with dongles it's harder to met to find the dongles for the, the ps3 ones um, they're very desirable if you find the dongle, the guitar, and the game. In fact, it goes for a lot of times more than this bundle right here, but you have to find three things, whereas opposed to this one, you just find two things, the guitar and the game. So the PS3 ones and certain PS3 guitars, you're going to need the dongle, the game, and the guitar. So the third thing is really hard to find. The dongles are not as easy as you think. All right. So I think I spent like 10 minutes on that one thing. Um, I want to show you the last find, which is from today. I found two things today, but one was a Patagonia organic cotton flannel for my wife. So that's with her right now. But this right here, pretty cool brand that you should be looking out for. This is called Magnani. Um, this will probably be the third or fourth pair of Magnanis that I will be flipping. These are just a normal Chelsea type boot. Nothing crazy to them. Really nice. It's Neiman Marcus style or Neiman Marcus product kind of thing. Um, or conjunction with Neiman Marcus. But anyways, Magnani is an awesome brand. They make really nice, high-quality boots. You might be passing right by this and going, ah, who cares about that? Uh, this right here, I bought it for, today I bought it for $18 out the door. Should be able to resell this for 100 bucks all day. Yeah, so, you know, pretty good score right there. I'm really big on boots and shoes. They're a lot of fun to do. Um, as you guys know, I built a shoe guide, so... Uh, you can check that out down below. It's one of the links down below. You should definitely get it if you haven't got it. Um, okay. So that's pretty much the finds. I always miss one or two things, but it's all good. 
I'm gonna hang around for a couple questions. So if you guys have any questions or anything like that, um, it's raining super hard here in Austin, Texas. I don't think I'm gonna be able to do a ride along tomorrow or anything like that, but I do have awesome footage from Charlotte thrifting and some other things in Austin, Texas, some other ride alongs in the past. I probably have four ride alongs I could edit. So I'm gonna be doing that uh, probably today. But if you do enjoy the videos, whether these hall, they are hauls or whether they are ride alongs, you know, garage sale style, then hit the like button for me. I would greatly appreciate that. Um, Brad G says, highest sale brand new on one of those was 300 bucks. So yeah, if you find these guitar things brand new, the bundle and everything, which came in like a rectangular box that was kind of flat, the Guitar Hero 3 Warriors of Rock bundle is still like selling for over three, over two something brand new, which is really hard to find, super hard. Um, but it's one of those things that's kind of a unicorn thing. So, you know, if you're scouting offer up and let go and, um, you know, Facebook marketplace and all that kind of stuff, eventually some come up every now and then, but you have to be really fast to get them. And sometimes the people sell them for, you know, 30 bucks, 50 bucks, and you might be thinking that's a lot of money. If it's new in the box and it's unopened, it's worth an absolute fortune because they don't make them anymore. So, um, <laughs> okay, so Brandon Van says, do you do any trades up? Um, I don't know what that question means, but let me know what, what – rephrase that question. Maybe I can help you out. Louis M., when's the best time in the week to go to Goodwill? Okay, this is a good question. I would say I personally like Wednesdays – no, I personally like Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays the most because that's when most people are at work. They don't break away. So sometimes people go to – Okay, so this is the reason why I don't like to go on Monday so much because Monday the thrift stores are completely drained out by the weekend. Everyone's going to them and stuff, at least here in Austin, Texas. So Monday they're kind of scrambling <clears throat> to fill the shelves and process things in the back because a lot of people also donated a bunch of stuff on the weekend, which means on Tuesday it's when a lot of that stuff starts to really hit the floor and you get to see it. It's pretty cool. So Tuesday is awesome. Um, Tuesdays are also, you know, depending on where you go, good days for discounts and stuff like that. Uh, Wednesdays in this town are really good in certain thrift stores um and some thrift stores do half off complete on everything like salvation army so wednesdays are a really good day to thrift thursday is a really good day to thrift too because there's still stuff being processed from the weekend that got turned in and thursday it's really awesome but then friday here in austin texas it seems like no one wants to work after noon and so i start to see on friday that it's a little scarce um and so that's the reason why on friday i like to go to garage sales in the morning or something like that um, and then Saturdays are definitely garage sale days for me, including thrift days. Sundays are thrift days if I want to. Um, so yeah, if the best days of the week to go though would be Thursday, when, I mean, sorry, Tuesday, Thursday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, I only go on the weekend thrifting if it's like a bad weekend, there's like rain everywhere or something like that. That's typically, or if I'm on a garage sale route, then I'll pop into some thrift stores. Uh, Louie M, how do you get your coupons for Goodwill? So uh, the Goodwill here in Austin, Texas, on the bottom of the uh, coupon thing, it shows, and there's one right here. So I'll show it to you right now. All right, so this is a good little receipt from this town. This is the one where I bought the neat scanner, right? So the scanner out the door was 1265. Um, but right here, there's a thing, at least in the Austin ones, where it says, your opinion matters. Get 10% off your next purchase by completing our survey. So what I do is I go here, I complete a survey, and I write, it says you were supposed to write the coupon code here, but it also gives you the survey. Okay, so it gives you the survey on a like a screen if you do it on your cell phone, right? If you snap the screen, all right, so screenshot it to your phone, you can use that, and I can use that in every Goodwill here in town. I'll get 10% off. Um, so the code changes every single month. I personally just show the same code that I've had from like eight months ago survey. So, I mean – everyone's taking it it's all good um so yeah so i don't know if you guys have this on your receipts but it's sitting right there you're supposed to put the coupon code right here but i snapshot it on my phone and it says it on the phone on the snapshot saying keep this snapshot on your phone presented to goodwill so even if they're like you have to write it on on a thing right here you can just show on the phone like look it says clearly like you just save it to your phone so there you go 10 percent off which is good you might be thinking like it's kind of dumb, like who cares? This stuff adds up, okay? Year over year, month over month, whatever, this stuff adds up quickly. So yeah, don't miss out on that kind of stuff. I know on Savers here in this town too, if you're part of the Savers Club and you spend over a hundred bucks, they give you a 20% off coupon on your account. So, you know, as many things as I buy from Savers, getting all these 20% off coupons, all kind of stuff. Um, you can also donate to Savers in the back, like around the green area, you know? 
and uh, you get 30% off coupons there. If you give enough stuff and you're really cool and friendly with the person that takes your stuff, then you can get a 30% off coupon just from that. Um, and then pay attention to the codes, the color codes of tags and stickers, no matter what thrift store you're in, because typically from Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, some of these stores are doing like 50% off on all kinds of stuff, you know? So just be in the know. Um, <laughs> Louis M says, thanks, dude. I love the info. You're, you're very welcome, man. The Swede says, Salvation Army has been better for prices. Yeah, you know, I'm finding really good. When I hit good cheddar finds, usually the prices are never taxing in Salvation Army. I would say out of all the thrift stores that I go to, Salvation Army is the one that hasn't caught up to the extremely high pricing. Um, I would say Goodwill is the first in line, and then Savers is right behind it, and then it's uh, Salvation Army. Um, all right. Uh, Cruz Rendon says, I got some fried men's leather boots, awesome, uh, and Meslon shoes on offer up for cheap. Meslon I'm not too hot about, but Fry is really good. Meslon can sit around for a little bit. Fry usually goes pretty quickly out the door. Um, <laughs> Jay Galvin says, you have my wife hooked on dopios. Yeah, that's awesome. Like, I'm really pumped. Uh, dopios are two shots of espresso. They're really good. I, I like them because, much like dark chocolate, it's something that... If you have more and more of it, you can start to really notice the differences between a high quality one and a low quality one. And it's fun. Like once you get a good one, you're like, you're super hooked. And it gives you a really, really, really good energy spike. Um, nothing like a Red Bull or a Monster where you feel great for a little bit and then you crash. You know, Adopio is a little different. Um, it's good to see everyone here. Uh, Joe Molina says, Am I still doing hot shots? Yeah, I still am doing hot shots all the time. I just don't film them as much because. Trying to figure out like how to balance uh, my whole content creation lifestyle. It's really hard to do. B believe it or not, like I have my I have two channels, right? This is my, one of my channels, and then my other channel is a workout channel, and that channel actually has surpassed this channel in subscribers already. So, you know, I'm, I don't know, and I've I've been coming back from like just family trips and family trips and vacations and stuff like that. Uh, I want to get back to work, and I have another vacation in like two weeks. So, I don't know. I just want to get back to work and like you know an actual routine. It's really hard to do. <laughs> um, all right, what other kind of questions we got here? Yeah, you know, like the whole this time of year is like really big family time. So you know, did family trip to Charlotte. My parents came the week before that, and then going to Arkansas soon. Anyone want to meet up in Bentonville or Fayetteville? Let's do it in like two weeks. Let me know. Um, doing that too. Um, what else we got here? Uh, Mark Catch Seven says, "How am I going to ship the guitar?" Um, so I kind of demonstrated on the guitar how to ship them out. You disconnect the neck, put the neck right on the guitar. You put the game right next to it. Saran wrap it with this stuff right here. Let me find you a roll, so you guys kind of have a visual on what I'm using. Basic stuff like this. All right, a little Saran wrap. I guess is what it's called. Plastic wrap. This is really important. You don't need to be doing bubble wrap. I do use bubble wrap stuff. I use bubble <laughs> to fill in the voids of boxes, but I try to get the boxes as tight as possible so where all the items when I shift it off the F ship it off the FBA doesn't like ship around, you know, like shift around a whole bunch. But yeah, this stuff is really, really good. All the pawn shops in town use this in the back, by the way. And it keeps everything together really nicely. And it protects things to some extent from scuffs and scratches and things like that. It won't protect from impact very well, but if you fill in, you know, if you you know, you know what you're doing if you're doing if you're dealing with FBA. You kind of have to build like a little protection fortress in your box with other things to get like the delicate things in the middle to not shift around. So, anyways, there's that. Um, all right, what else we got here? Brian lives in Fayetteville. Any, anything in particular? I'm here for. I'm gonna be there for thrifting and mountain biking. Uh, yeah, so I will be there soon. Um, Botella Fish 21, where's your store and name, please? Uh, message me behind the scenes. I usually give out my uh, eBay store behind the scenes. So, um, <laughs> all right. So I think that's pretty much it. You know, this was uh, the, I thought it was a pretty good haul, you know, for three and a half hours of actual store to store thrifting and then like an hour of processing, which I'm going to start that hour the minute I turn this thing off. I thought it was a really good haul. Um, don't forget to always keep your boxes that you order from Amazon Prime, all that kind of stuff, because that's essentially what. Most of this stuff goes into or USPS boxes, you know, shoe boxes. Make sure to get your boxes in line. Make sure to get your tape ordered in high quantity. Make sure you have bubble wrap galore. Don't be reacting to anything. And that way you'll be really able to hit up your own 
version of a hot shot in your hometown and keep it really nice and high energy and you won't be denying any good cheddar because oh i don't know what kind of box i'm gonna put it at i don't have any padding for that or whatever you know so try not to be reacting too much and leave yourself open to making a lot of money and then before you know it you'll be making 50 bucks an hour 100 bucks an hour things like that it's not hard to do um yeah you know, might just have to think about it a different way sometimes people's towns are not as good as mine and sometimes when i go to other people's towns i'm like dude i think my town sucks compared to this town because this one has way more opportunity. So everyone's got their own situation going on. You just have to make the best out of it. And if that means selling more on local markets versus FBA, you have to do that. It means you have to list a little bit more. If it means you have to do a little bit more eBay than something else or maybe Poshmark than something else, you got to do that too. You have to adapt to whatever market opportunities you have in your town. So this is pretty much what it is. Oh, yeah. So and, and this is the last thing I want to leave you guys with. If you are interested in my other channel, which is fitness-oriented, it's not reselling oriented whatsoever, but uh, you can go check it out. It's called Bod Dam. B B O D D A M N. B O D D A M N. And I'll see you on the other side if you want fitness stuff. Um, Blizzard Life. Here's the last question. What town is better than yours? Okay, so like Naples and Cape Coral, they're really close together. That's immediately better than mine. Um, I've heard. Uh, oh, actually, San Diego and all that surrounding stuff. Yeah, this is be that's better than this. There's so much opportunity in places like that. There's like pawn shops on every corner. There are thrift stores everywhere around San Diego. You have to like drive a little bit more but they're like all over the place um what else is better than this tiny little places like durango colorado surprisingly had really good stuff um but i noticed for sure without a doubt in my mind that a lot of stuff in florida is super good like way better than stuff here um but it is what it is and i know denver is pretty decent too um yeah i've been in denver as well so that's not too bad but yeah, can I give it, uh, Nick Shelton's, can I give a tutorial on local selling? Uh, yeah, it's not really hard to explain, but it's a little, it's a little bit more psychology oriented and uh, it's pretty easy to do. I mean, yeah. <laughs> so I could give a tutorial on local selling. It's not hard to do. I mean, I've been doing it for like 14 years. So anyways, uh, last question. Does my box wall ever get overfilled? That's a really good question. Um, Yes and no. Right now it's overfilled a little bit, but there's also stuff on my wall that just doesn't belong there. I don't use it, but like once a year. So I've been trying to sell that stuff off or donate it, and it leaves more spaces in the wall. So I'm trying to get, truthfully, half of or three quarters of a garage wall, an average two car garage wall, three quarters of it to be only eBay inventory. So I'm pretty close. Like right now, when I look at my wall, which is over here, it's about half, like exactly half. It's in a weird kind of way, but like a Tetris-like shape. But it's definitely half by this point. And uh, if I can get to three quarters, like from top to bottom, um, I think that would be easy to run 200 item eBay store from that. And my goal this year was to do no more than 200 items on eBay, like high quality items that paid 50 bucks or more. Um, and I can't even get to three, uh, 200 items. Like it's really hard to do. So I'm back down like one, 35 or something like that, maybe 140 by yesterday because I listed some items. But um, yeah, I think it's the right thing to do as opposed to, oh, I have an eBay store of 1,000 items or 5,000 items, that's great. But if you're shipping off $10 items and $20 items, that's not good. You know, I'd much rather have an eBay store with 100 or 300 items where an item average selling price is 100 bucks you know, or more. And I say that with confidence because if you look at your ASP, Right, average selling price, which is on the seller hub. Uh, it's about midway down the page. On the left, you hit, oh, I forgot, sales reports plus, I think, is the button you hit. And then once you hit that link, it brings you to another page. You look midway down the page, and there's a thing called ASP, average sale price. If your ASP is not going up, then you're making less money, um, typically, because thrift store prices are going up, right? So if your ASP isn't going up accordingly, then you're likely making less money unless you kind of counteract that with volume somehow or you have a higher you've hired some help typically you're making less so rather than spin your wheels i always advocate looking at higher ticket items okay and that's the reason why when you see what i am reselling it's a lot of times hundred dollar shoes or you know 70 dollar things on fba that i bought for 10 bucks things like that uh anything that's fba oriented is a little bit different like to me i'm like i would chase 20 bucks on fba 30 bucks because i'm just sticking a sticker on there and if it's really low rank i'll i'll resell something if i make an 18 dollar profit right as long as it's out the door in a box 
and uh, you know I don't have to deal with it at that point. But for all the things that should sit in my house, I'm really targeting every one of those things to be fifty dollars or more in pure profit. And the evidence of that would be in my ASP. My ASP as of last month, which I don't think it's gonna be higher this month, but I hope it is. But I think last month my ASP was. Oh no, they haven't released November ASP yet. I don't think yet. But October ASP. Mine was at $90. The month before that was 75. The month before that maybe 73, something like that. So I'm definitely working hard on ASP, and the number doesn't lie. You know, you can sit there and be like, I think I'm making more money than I, you know, blah, blah, blah. but the number is the truth. All right. So look at your ASP. It's really important. It's in your main page of eBay, the same page where you see, you know, what to ship off today, all that kind of stuff. Scroll down to Sales Reports Plus. It's on the left side, midway down the not down the page. Click that link, and then after that link, you can find your ASP sitting there. It's three little green bars, all right? And look at your ASP and study that thing, all right? If it's not where you want to be, then study harder, buy my guides, go into some of these paid Facebook groups, do whatever you need to do to get your ASP higher. It's really important because I guarantee you, no matter what town you are in America, you know, if you're going to thrift stores or garage sales, you're probably passing by a lot of high ticket things. And... That's not good, right? Because you're probably passing it by because one of two things. One, you're fearful of testing process or you know picking it up and no, not knowing what to do after you picked it up. And I understand that fully because I go through that sometimes as well for certain genres that I don't know much about. But I know a lot about a lot of genres though. And the second reason why I think people don't want to you know get into higher price items sometimes is because complacency is just comfortable, right? And you don't want to challenge yourself to learn something brand new, which might include sometimes losing some money. So those two things are probably costing you, you know, this enormous in income stream that you could be making, but you're shortchanging yourself because you're just sitting there going, oh, I'm scared of it, you know, or uh, I just like what I'm doing now, you know? So. Yeah, that's the reason why I broke away from bicycles. I mean, I still hustle bicycles, but bicycles are like my main thing for like the first two years that I hustled. But I quickly went outside of that quickly. I mean, went to lake related goods and all this kind of stuff because I realized like it's not every day are these things going to be here. And sure enough, you know, many years later, the bike market in this town is not as easy as it used to be. And thank God I actually diversified with my items and I learned so many other different things that. To me, I'm like, if I don't find a bike today, it's not the end of the world. Whereas 14 years ago, if I didn't find a, a bike like nearly every single day of the week to resell, I was like, well, I'm not making that much money. So anyways, just something to consider. Look at your ASP. Really, really important. Like my videos, subscribe to my channel, buy all my guides and my merch. <laughs> and uh, I'll see you on the other side. I'm just joking about that. But seriously, if you want to learn some stuff, buy my stuff. Um, all that stuff. I've got questions like, where do I get your guides? All that kind of stuff. Description below. You can learn about bags shoes, bikes. I built guides about all that kind of stuff. So um, outside of that, watch my videos. I mean, there's like 800 free videos on my channel where I typically do stuff like this. So you can, if you want to get on the cheap and just learn it for free, some of these higher ticket items and things that you should be looking for, you know, I try to break it down in, more real, in a realistic sense. And uh, videos like this in my garage, I tend to explain things a little bit more than I do when I find them in the raw at a garage sale or something like that. Uh, is a little bit more high energy and I want to get to the next sale and stuff like that. So I tend to not explain as much, but things like this, if you catch me live, feel free to ask questions and things like that. Cause I definitely want to help you guys out and nothing makes me more happy than being able to be in this position where I can get <laughs> paid to kind of do this. Um, and I get messages in the background, like, man, bought your guide, freaking awesome. <laughs> like paid for itself, like hand over fist, super awesome guide. You know, those kind of things make me happy or like I took my, kids on vacation, like this is what we did with some of the money that we learned from you. I get pictures and all kinds of cool stuff. So, you know, I never thought it would be like that, but I'm glad it's like that now. So anyways, guys, um, that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you on the next Bonafide Hustler video. Take it easy. Goodbye.